I mean, so, and all it's, the main thing is, it's so easy to do. It's extremely easy to do. I, I would walk to downtown carrying a table in one hand, backpack full of cards, this on a board, and that's all it takes. And, and you know, I'd like to thank, you know, James and Boomer and Chloe and Ken and EJ for helping me and for doing it as well, because um, it's so much fun to do as a group. But this has been probably the best tool we've had for Riverside County because, you know, we've, we now have an activity, even if it's just something simple standing out in the street at Art Walk and just stopping people. But, you know, that's a skill in itself. I mean, I thought to myself, oh, this will be easy, stopping someone on the street. It's not. Because people, a lot of times, they, you know, they often tell me, I don't know anything about politics, or I don't like politics. That's the best one. When people tell you they don't like politics, ask them to take the quiz. <laughs> or say, I don't like politics either. Yeah, I actually hate this whole politics idea. Here, why don't you take my political quiz? <laughs> but we've had, I mean, this is never ceases to amaze me. We've had some of those interesting people stop by and talk to us and ask, you know, sometimes hard questions, sometimes soft questions. We've had college professors, usually like once a month, I would say, we get a college professor who stops me at least an hour. Uh, <laughs> they have plenty of questions, but we had, I've had, we've had attorneys, we've had local business people, but the reality is, in these people's eyes, we were something serious. The fact that Riverside County, I mean, we were a once a year meeting and now we're doing small coffee shop meetings, but in the public's eyes, we've got, we're something a little bit bigger than we really are. And now we're going to start doing this at RCC and UCR to, you know, really pull in the ranks. But what's amazing is it's so easy to look bigger than you really are. And it's so easy to be taken seriously, and people have a positive view of you. I mean, people, that, that, that is by far the greatest thing, is that we're, people like us now. So it's gone from not knowing who we are, to if they did know who they are, they really didn't like us. We were really bad people, apparently, because <laughs> we are pro-pollution, we are pro-torture, we are pro-anything bad. And now when they actually talk to us, they go, oh, he's a nice guy. They seem pretty reasonable. I've had people invite me to their parties just because of the table. They weren't even libertarians. So, I mean, I, I'm recommending this for everyone in this room to somehow get involved with. Find a regular once a month or once every two months, or just if you know a street's busy, you know, every Saturday something's going on there, farmer's market. They can't tell you to leave if you're doing political work, mm -hmm. unless it's private property. But if it's public property, you set up your table, they can't tell you to take a hike. And if they do, all right, you know, you got some wind. Call the reinforcements and let's have some fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you get arrested and you're, you know, for setting up a table and asking people to take a quiz, but um, and I'll share some other experiences. Um, I had a girl, she came up to us and it was uh, Hope Boyer, I forgot to think. She was uh, doing tabling, this was her first time, and a girl stopped her who was a member of an ISO, an International Socialist Organization. And they're pushing for like a, a Leninist style approach, but no Stalin, because Stalin was bad, but Lenin was good and right. <laughs> you know, Lenin and Mao, great ideas, but he just like he ended up being a bit of a dick. But but so here but here are here this is our competition in town. Here we have people pushing hardcore, serious socialism, not this watered-down European stuff, but I mean the real, you know, deathly be afraid of this stuff, and now they want to come and heckle us, which from a point of view of a libertarian, it's great. I mean, you, I mean this girl, uh, she was telling me uh, how we could, you know, distribute everything. I said, well, how are we going to calculate prices? Well, you know, and she said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, if this sandwich shop is to serve sandwiches, they need to have bread, and that comes from grain. They buy bread from a bakery who buys it from, uh, you know, grain distribution, distribution centers. How are they going to determine prices, determine who gets what products? And, I mean, totally cool, totally nice. But here she, like, falls apart right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes down to, well, I don't have enough education to answer your question. Mm -hmm. But the people at my ISO cult do. <laughs> and if I can get them to come answer your question, they'll have an answer for your price count. And I said, please, by all means, bring them next Thursday. I want nothing more than speak with these people. So, but even even then, I let the I wasn't rude to her. I'm not going to ever be rude to somebody unless you know, I kind of deserve it. <laughs> but even then, we let the positive light in our eyes. I said, look. Much like you, we're against the war. We're against the imperial. Actually, we're the you know, premier anti-war party. 
And this has been, you know, they came on pushing for the Libertarian Party. If you're anti-war, anti-drug war, we're the premier organization for that. We're not just a small one, we're the big one. You're wasting your time anywhere else you're wasting your time. This is the place where you should be. And people are starting to read, take note to it. I mean, I've had people say, you know what? I'm 80% Democrat, 90% Libertarian. I say, you can still vote Democrat. But why don't you register our way? And if you don't like us, you don't have to vote for us. But at least, you know, you're kind of showing the numbers. So, you know, Prop 14, we can still have a little bit of muscle to us. Um, but it's been an absolute blast. I, I guess I have all the Libertarian outreach I've done, which has been mostly internet outreach and various things like that, which gets a little boring. and. And you get threats and stuff, that's no fun. But <laughs> this has been the most fun, most, I mean, positively for me as a person, being able to approach people on the street, it's a skill, it's something I've, I've proud to see I've gotten better. And I want to thank the Boomer again, who's given me the best advice for stopping people cold on the street. Would you like to take a political quiz? I mean, it gets a little nerve wracking at times, especially you know, a group of hot girls walk by and think, okay, I got to stop them and ask them all for my attention now. I mean, they got to pay attention to me pick now. Up one. Yeah, yeah, my pickup line. Want to take a political quiz? I mean, but after a while, you kind of get you, you know, counted. It's so corny, it works. Hey, you know what? The, it does. This has been the only thing that's worked. I'm thinking, wow, you know, libertarianism to pick up women. This is like, <laughs> I never thought of it. I would write a 500 page book showing this won't win. <laughs> <laughs> but it has, and it's not the fact that I'm so good looking or I'm so funny, it's the fact that we're positive and we're genuine and we're sincere and people pick up on that and we need to start using that as a recruitment tool. The fact that our sincerity, not our aggressiveness, I mean, I've not always been a libertarian and I'm going to bet that not all of you have always been libertarians. At one point in time, you were something other than a libertarian. Either you didn't know you were you know, atheist or agnostic libertarian, but at one point, yeah, and I use that in a political sense, not a religious sense, but you weren't a libertarian, and you probably didn't become a libertarian because some asshole was yelling at you, calling you a jerk, and that you're gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are you serious? Who here, raise of hands, who here was not always been a libertarian? I have not always been a libertarian. Okay, keep your hands up. Who became a libertarian? Keep your hands up. If you became a libertarian because some jerk off was yelling at you, threatening you, was being generally unpleasant to you. Not a single hand up. And yet, you know, that is the model for so much activism, is negative behavior. And now, who here became a libertarian because of positive behavior, because of social interactions, or because of well-written literature, because intellectual groups? It was positive. Let's use that as our strength. This is a tool. It allows us to stop people, talk to people, get them interested in what we're doing, tell them, uh, advertise our meetings, which is key, because we want new people at these meetings. It's been an absolute blast. It's good for us because we need to practice our people skills, folks. I mean, let's just say, I mean, you know, um, this is also like an Asperger's test up here. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're up here, which I'm gonna bet 80% of the room is, you need to develop those people skills. Me too. <laughs> and this is, this is, I mean, the people skills are more important than the philosophy skills. If nobody reads your book because you're a jerk, uh, you might as well not have even written it. So the, the people skills are everything. This trains your people skills. It trains your questions. Now, that, now you get to know what's important to your community. I mean, I live in Riverside, lifelong resident of Riverside. Even then, I wasn't exactly sure what was important. And I'm asking, so what's important to you? People's like, oh, marijuana. That's been the big thing uh, with this Yes We Cannabis. And then other groups would come up to us and they'd say, hey, we really like what you're doing. Can we give you a stack of flyers for our you know, Yes on 19 campaign? Absolutely. No, we just made more friends with Yes on 19, and they love us now too. So it's been just a general positive, you know, even with other groups. I mean, other groups are taking note to what we're doing, and it's, you know, the negative groups, you know, the international socialists, the, they can't come and do this. I mean, the socialists can't have their own little quiz, like, you know, how Leninist are you? Are you a Pol Potist? I mean, they can't do that. It's, <laughs> what are they going to do? Are they going to ask? Okay. Parody in there are, somewhere. Are they going to ask you 10 questions to determine what kind of socialist you are today? Whoa, check that out. You're a Hitlerian socialist. Come to our meeting. <laughs> no, they don't have that. They can't engage them. This is our strength. We can engage people, and people like no. us. So, anyway, folks, that's all I wanted to share with you. Do um, you have any questions? Oh, uh, Ted? Yeah. Just one thing, Riley, you, you uh, about uh, attracting people to your table. You don't know who the next activist is going to be. Uh, San Luis Obispo has had tables like that for 